Man, it's good to actually hang out with you guys again. I feel like it's been forever since I've been able to just chill, you know? <laughs> I'm talking about Mr. a couple of first round Since we sharing big news, I got some myself. There's no love for Zo, ever. Today, from MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, it's week 16 of the NFL on EA Sports. this offense gets set to take over. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. He's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. The numbers for Bell on the ground of the game last week. 21 carries, 67 yards. Well, we know they've clinched a playoff spot, but there's plenty of football left to play. And I'm a proponent of continuing to do what you've done throughout the season, especially with teams that are heavy run teams. Because if you throttle back too early, you lose the rhythm of the run game, not just with the runner, but with the offensive line as well. It's a loss of four. Now third down. They'll look to throw here. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Kalevon Chason able to record his fifth sack of the season. Now the Jets send on Braden Mann to punt. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. Fielded at about the 28. It's a net of 40 there. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. 
And there, of course, was a lot of talk about this ball game coming into play. Two division leaders in the AFC. Could this be a potential playoff preview down the line? Yeah, and I think when you're talking about the talk about this game coming into play, you're talking about me because I blew up your phone all week prior to this one. I was so excited about this game because, to me, it's not out of the realm of possibility that these two teams see each other again down the road. I like this matchup. They match up very well against each other. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now a first down carry by Bell. And down to the 44, five yards that time. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. On the counter, here's Bell. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. I know flashy plays, flashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back five-yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield. Picked it up on the ground. The offensive line, they're getting it done. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. This is turning into something of a comeback season for Carter Landry Charles. He's been, I think, a much bigger part of this offense than a lot of people expected. He has said that being around this club has re-energized him, and he's really accepted his role as being the elder statesman of the team, the mentor to some of these guys. They call him Gramps, and it's a term of affection when they say it to him. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. They'll run on first down. Bell, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he's sacked. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Gonzalez's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that, was a day that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They'll look to throw here on first down. Being chased out left. Finding some room at midfield. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Now following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Now this one complete to Corey Davis. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 23. Press coverage on the outside and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on them. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. On first down, it's Bell. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. 
On second down, it's Bell. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Drop to throw to the right side and complete to Landry. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout. So as they take it over, we step aside. And no signs of the field goal unit. They're going for it on fourth down. They'll set up to throw. On the move to his left. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Now Bell. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. And that gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year, but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's found the end zone plenty of times. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away as his guys have now moved out in front. He continues to show at this level that he can not only pass for touchdowns, he can run for touchdowns. Not the first time we've seen this because... Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And we'll see how they want to play this. Just a little over 20 seconds to go. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And oh, he's going to be hit and driven into the turf. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Looking to throw. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So a costly penalty yardage-wise is that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. They'll throw now on the final play. Eluding the pressure right. And a throw there going to be incomplete. So we've reached half. You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the inland. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. They'll look to throw now on first down. Forced out to his left. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 
So in Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 47. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And now they're in the hurry up. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. It's their quarterback. It's... Now the offense back out onto the field as he'll take over here in the final minute of this third quarter. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. He'll look to throw. Steps away. And bringing it in, it's Davis. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Now a play fake here on first down. Sliding out of the pocket. This is Bell on the dump off. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Options galore here, second and a few inches. The give is to Bell. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. They go play action here on first down. Man open here is Crowder. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Open man left side, that's the tight end, Herndon. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. He'll drop to throw, and that's caught by Landry. Touchdown, Chance. A great effort there. What? the Jets as they'll set up to go for two. They'll try and throw for it. And he's got it. The conversion good and we are tied in the four. Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted the tie now and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done. Get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all our score as he sends this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. And the Jacksonville offense on their way out again as we take a look at the playoff race in the AFC. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. I like what I'm seeing from them here. A tie game in the fourth quarter. They understand the situation. They don't need to be in any rush. Go ahead and huddle up and run your offense. That last completion put them in a nice position to take the lead in this game. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts. 
It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Again, it's Robinson. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. On third down, Lawrence. And the catch good. It's Eifert. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. He's playing pretty well. I don't think it's necessarily him changing up something he's doing, but that old line, they've got to protect him better. They do. They've got to make sure that they give him more than enough time in order to find targets downfield. And sometimes what happens when these things are going on is that the, the field general will step up and say, hey, that's on me, guys. I didn't get rid of it fast enough. Anything to try and relax them a little bit and take some pressure off because they do know that they are trying. Yeah, well, we've seen the four sacks so far in this contest. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, so much for getting separation. No chance there. Locked down tight, forcing the incompletion on that attempt. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. He will find the rookie from Ole Miss, Elijah Moore. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They've got it first and ten as they search for a go-ahead score. A first down run for Bell, not going to get much. Maybe a couple, and it's second down. And it's a rush to the line right now for the Jets. Here's second and eight. He's got Landry, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They'll run on first down. Bell. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. The play action fake. They'll look to. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Back to throw here. And that will be incomplete. Tie game, fourth quarter, and they're going for this thing on fourth down. They'll look to throw. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. That's caught left side by Landry. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 23. Well, Carter Landry maybe doesn't have the speed he once had in his Longhorn days, but he showed a nice little burst after that catch. Almost like he had a little bit of a throwback there, huh, partner? Because while he was never really a burner, he did have the ability to outrun linebackers. And here, as you described, he looked like the 2014 Carter Landry, and he rumbled for a big gain. Timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining. 
And everything right now rests on the right foot of Zane Gonzalez. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. And everything right now rests on the right foot of Zane Gonzalez. He made his only attempt earlier. This for the win. And that is no good. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. Well, this winds up in empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. What I would do is either... And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Ashton Davis. And the Jets are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. You know, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. Airing one out for Crowder. And that is incomplete. Four quarters not enough for all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. A fairly short kick from the 14. And they're gonna start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. They're set for their first drive here in overtime, and this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. On first down, Robinson. Tackle made by Foley Fadukasi, the former UConn Husky. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Lawrence with the handoff to Robinson. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Total run show Fadukasi there on the tackle. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Two minutes left in this overtime session and still on time. So a big play in this opening drive of overtime. Now looking at a third and three. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And that is incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense. He's passed few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. The kick by Lambeau is good. And with it, they have taken the lead. 
They're able to put three on the board here on the opening drive of OT and now up to their defense to try and see if they can hold this one. I like how you framed it up because obviously this game is not over, right? They go down and kick a field goal, then we head to sudden death. But if the defense can hold, take the ball away, turn it over on downs, this game's over. New York ready to go again offensively. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. Get the touchdown, finish the game off. That has to be the mindset. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Back to throw now on first down. Again, he's got that man Landry. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw again. He's got the first down here inside the 30. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. That's pulled in the veteran Carter Landry. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. That last pass puts him over 300 yards now in the game. More importantly, though, big first down here in OT. And the team around him has a lot of confidence now. After picking up that first down, everyone seems a little more energized. But did I hear you before the game call in and say, this is my quarterback for your fantasy <laughs> league? Because he just gave you a good stat, didn't he? He did, and I appreciate it. He'll look to throw on third and goal. Out to his left. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. So a field goal would keep the overtime alive, but they want to win this thing. They're going to go for it on fourth. Now back to throw. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. A great game, partner. A spectacular finish. They needed at least a field goal to keep the game alive. They do one better. They get in the end zone and end it. And I don't know about you, but I'm worn out. That type of a game takes it all out of us as well, not just the guys on the field. What a tremendous finish, and as you noted, were they going to go and try and get three and keep the game going? And that wasn't good enough for them. They got the touchdown, and that's why we're able to say goodbye. So for the Jets, the wins keep coming as this one moves them to 12-3 and three on the year. And they'll get to stay home again next week as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come to town. Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, their playoff hopes take a big hit as they fall to 8-7. and seven. And they'll look to get back in the winning column next week as they head to Foxborough to face off against the New England Patriots. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the JET. Back now on OT with KC, I'm your host, Kevin Connors, and I will tell you, I am nothing if not a man of my word. My great listeners wanted this interview for a long time now, and your boy is here to deliver. He was a star at Texas. 
Now he's the face of the franchise with the Jets. And yes, he's finally on our show. My man, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Kevin. I'm sorry it's taking so long to make it happen. Hey, hey, look, no apology needed. Your life has been a whirlwind since the day you were drafted. I, I got to imagine it's been nonstop. <laughs> yeah, it's been hectic, but it's also been pretty amazing. I mean, I love what it means to be a pro in this league. Yeah, and being a pro also means getting to be in Madden. I mean, you go from playing the game to being in it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but they got to get my ratings up. I know every player says that, but I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, you and every other dude in the league, you know. But I will tell you, I happen to know a few guys on the Madden team. So you play your cards right. Maybe OKC puts in a good word for you, all right? Yeah, you got to do that. Because I am not sure they've been watching my games close enough, Kev. Yeah, look, well, I can assure you I've been watching your games. And, you know, there's one in particular I'd love to ask you about.